Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GQ Jedi. If you're not already subscribed to me, blast that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any valuable Star Wars content. Now today we're going to discuss the R2-D2 action figures. Kenner made a handful of them for the three and three quarter inch mainline toys and I thought we should give R2 his due. So let's go say hi to everyone's favorite astromech. There is no greater hero in the galaxy than everyone's favorite astromech. R2-D2. This feisty droid was first introduced to audiences when he and his counterpart C-3PO first escaped capture from Darth Vader aboard the tan 4 It was R2 who was entrusted with the Death Star plans by Princess Leia. That important information had to be received by the Rebels, and R2 wouldn't rest his circuits until the mission was complete. He is a faithful and endlessly resourceful little droid. From helping Luke Skywalker take out the first Death Star to fixing the Falcon's hyperdrive, there is nothing R2 can't do. There's a reason C-3PO picks on R2. He's jealous. R2-D2 is a straight up boss whom everyone loves and counts on to save the day when it matters. R2's popularity would extend so far out into the galaxy that Kenner chose him along with Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and Chewbacca to be the first three and three quarter inch action figures released in the new Star Wars toy line as part of the 1977 early bird set, Kenner's first mail away offer. R2 would also be later released in 1978 on a card back as part of the first 12 figures. Regardless of how you got your first R2 action figure, you never let go of him at playtime. He was the hero you needed, and his name was R2-D2. R2-D2 is an amazing action figure and one of my personal favorites in the entire Kenner line. Um, I really think Kenner did a great job with this figure. As you can see here from the original Star Wars movie, R2-D2 has a shiny dome and he's got lights on him and Kenner did the best job that they could with what they had back in the day. Um, this figure is very simple. He does have a shiny dome that does, does click, um, which is cool. Um, the body itself is mostly a decal. As you guys can see, it's a very um, detailed decal that's on both sides, front and back. And if you flip R2 over, you can check out his uh, the lower half. His uh, legs, of course, move. And on the bottom of the body, there is a 1977 Hong Kong date stamped on there. Um, and, of course, there is a screw in the bottom which holds the head to the body. Um, but like I said, I love this action figure. I think Kenner did a great job for what they had back in the day. And um, I just I love R2. What can I say? In 1979, Kenner released one of their first playsets, the Droid Factory playset. And the most important, highly sought after piece in this entire playset was none other than the R2-D2 action figure with a removable third leg. This was the only way to get this version of R2. You had to get the Droid Factory playset. Now my sticker um, has a little bit of yellowing on it, but um, he came with the set and the set's complete. So I'm very stoked. This R2 does not click. The head uh, does not make the clicking noise, um, unlike the original. Um, but he does still sport a decal over his plastic body. And this being the Droid Factory set, um, you can build this R2 so pieces of this droid do come off. So you can remove his head and uh, you know things of that nature. But the major difference to this R2 is the addition of the third removable leg. Um, it just pops right out. Um, very simple and if you see there is a cavity inside the body of the R2 to hold the leg and the very bottom of the body is blank so there is no stamp on it like the uh, previous R2-D2. Um, there is no screw in the body as this R2-D2 is um, he's made to be taken apart and put back together so uh, you know a fastening screw is not needed um, but as far as R2-D2's goes for action figures I think this one is awesome. I really do love this R2. I love the third leg. Really feel like this is the true representation of R2-D2. Um, we see him roll around many places throughout the movie with this third leg out. So I'm glad that Kenner included this action figure like this. With the release of The Empire Strikes Back, Kenner gave R2-D2 a major upgrade. When he hit toy shelves on a card back and came packaged in the Rebel Command Center playset in 1981, which I just reviewed, so I'll leave a link down below, he looked like he did in the film, complete with a new blue telescoping sensor scope. 
I think Kenner did a great job with this uh, new version of R2. A very nice upgrade from the original. Um, he's got a shiny, shiny dome and the uh, familiar decal that we all know. Um, but it's all about this uh, the sensor scope on this one. As I was telling you guys, the uh, sensor scope is telescoping. It does go up and down, and there is a um, there is a tab on the on the scope that you just pull up, and uh, it allows the R2 to extend the uh, scope out. And of course, the um, dome itself does click, does still um, have a, a clicking motion. So um, Kenner has included that. The sensor scope hasn't changed that. Has the same body as before. Like I said, the same decals, the same legs. Everything is pretty much the same except for the sensor scope. Same date stamp. And of course, there is a screw in the bottom to hold the body together. Um, but this is an awesome action figure of R2, a nice upgrade, just a beautiful figure. And um, I use him heavily throughout my, uh, my display collection. He can fill in on Hoth, he can fill in on Dagobah, Bespin, R2, like true to his nature, you can stick him anywhere and he gets the job done. Return of the Jedi saw many action figures released under the line, but not in R2-D2. Instead, he was later released on card back in 1985 as part of the Power of the Force line. R2 was packaged with a shiny collector coin, and once again, R2 got an upgrade, or a modification if you will. And in this cabinet resides my R2-D2 with pop-up lightsaber. Um, this is a great action figure. It's a nice addition to the line. I do like the um, upgrade that R2's gotten, another new fancy trick for him, a reason to basically give him another action figure, which I support. We all remember the scene in Return of the Jedi when Luke is about to take the swan dive down into the Sarlacc pit until R2... Um, ejects his emerald lightsaber and Luke catches it and goes to town. Um, so Kenner's included a chunky green lightsaber that goes into the dome of this um, R2 unit. Sensor scope has been replaced and instead we now have a removable green lightsaber um, that just slots right into um, the dome like so. And the cool thing is that the dome still clicks uh, when you do turn it. You get the same clicking noise. When you do this, it does push the lightsaber up through the dome. Um, it doesn't eject it like we all hoped it would when we were kids. I think everyone wanted this to shoot across the room. But much like the Boba Fett rocket, um, for safety reasons, kind of nicks that idea. So it just pops up slightly. Um, but it gets the job done. Uh, the body has been retooled. Um, the head and the body are a little different. Um, had to be retooled to accommodate the lightsaber going through it. Um, there is still a screw in there to hold the head to the body um, and the decals and the legs are the same it's pretty much uh, almost the same R2 just with a, a green lightsaber shooting out the top this R2 is one of the last 17 one of the rarest figures in the run um, but I highly recommend picking one up if you're trying to complete your Kenner collection as of this moment I don't currently collect the Kenner droids cartoon action figure line but that could change in the future don't hold me to it and I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't tell you guys about the R2-D2 that Kenner created for the Droids cartoon toy line. Released on card back in 1985, the cartoon version of R2-D2 was immortalized in plastic. Much like the Power of the Force R2-D2, the Droids version also has a pop-up lightsaber feature. The major noticeable difference between both 80s issue Droids is that the cartoon version has a cartoon looking decal and paint job. There is no mistaking this Droid. Furthermore, since the droids cartoon didn't last that long on TV, the toy line didn't get much time on the shelves either. Droids R2-D2 is without a doubt the rarest of the R2 action figures to collect. But if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, I have to tell you about the glass light droids R2-D2 action figure. That's right, there's one more R2 from Kenner. Glasslight was Kenner's licensee for Brazil during the late 80s and they made a version of R2 with slight modifications but the figure looks very much like the regular droids R2. There, now you know. And remember how I told you guys that the droids, the regular droids R2 was the hardest to find? Just forget all that because according to C-3PO, the odds of successfully locating a glass light droids R2-D2 are approximately 3,000... Well, you don't want to know. 
Appreciate you guys tuning in today and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please share it and give that like button a thumbs up because it greatly helps out the channel and if you've not done so, blast that subscribe button and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss any valuable Star Wars content. And remember, collect or collect not, there is no try.